with like two different sides, independent and then the studio system. And so if you guys can just give me a, like a history of like your history as publicist, I, I think people think they know what publicists do, but they, they really probably don't. Like your job is a lot more involved than people realize. So yeah, give us a little breakdown of what a publicist is dealing with when we're talking about you know, launching a film for a premiere even. Well, I'm always chasing Eric Cohn to review my film. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for, for us on the publicity side, on the independent side, because I, I don't work for a studio, but it's really our goal at that festival, like Tara was saying, is to get that film sold and to really to lift the film up above the noise that's there so that the salespeople can do their job and to get as many eyeballs uh, on the film and to get as many good reviews uh, any type of um, interviews that we can get for the for the filmmakers and for the for the subjects. What we try to stay away from is any kind of larger piece that we can say for the distribution later. So, like if the New York Times comes to me and says, "Hey, we want to do a piece, you know, on this film," it's like you know, we want to we want to hold that so that way our salespeople can actually walk into a sales meeting saying, you know, New York Times will run a piece once it gets larger distribution. So for us, it's really. For me, uh, as a publicist, putting all together all the press materials, putting all the assets together so that we can bring those to you guys so that way you have everything that you're going to write your story for. On the documentary side, specifically on the press notes, I'm a big fan of filmmaker notes and why they did it because you're going to be sitting in your apartment or in your condo trying to write that review or that story. I want to give you as much information from the filmmaker in his or her voice of why they made the film and what you need to take out of it. So I spent a lot of time with them talking about what their filmmaker notes are. So it's within that. So it's just really managing uh, that whole kind of experience for the filmmaker and, and for the film. But Dave, it's also worth pointing out, I mean, I know you're pitching stuff to places like the New York Times because we know they're widely read, <laughs> right. but just how likely is it that all the films on your slate are gonna get reviewed by the New York Times? Not, no. not. It, it's, 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 it's very, very unlikely. Um, and in terms of reviews, we won't get reviewed, but we're looking at either uh, curtain raisers or wrap-ups you know so one year we had a film that was really doing really well and it didn't and it wasn't until the wrap-up that Manola, Manola Dargis the New York Times actually gave it some love and she we got like a half a page with a photo that's all I needed. I just think that context yeah. is important like, for people exactly. because yeah. it's, yeah. you know, don't undervalue how much right. currency a review at a festival can have. Right. Yeah. right. Because these big newspapers are not going to commit those no, resources. No, they don't. And they won't. Yeah. And yeah. then, Tara, to your point, I mean, the studio system is so different in a lot of ways, but so similar. And then, and then talk about you. You've been at Warner Brothers for. I've been at Warner Brothers for almost nine years. Yeah. Um, specifically, oh. and yeah. But before that, I worked at a PR agency doing Academy Award campaigns, working with uh, different studios. And before that, I was at Lionsgate, an independent studio, which is where I got my first experience into Sundance, because we would take our films um, that were obviously smaller. And at Warner Brothers, we don't necessarily take our films, because we have, they have obviously already have distribution, we're not in the business of independent film, we're a big blockbuster film, but I personally have, you know, invest and spend my own money to go to the festival every single year, because one, I think it's just a magical, creative, inspirational place, like, there's no way you can't leave inspired to do <coughs> whatever you want to continue to pursue creatively right. after going there, but um, also because I love independent film. Uh, and me as a studio exec and other studio execs go because a lot of the up-and-coming producers who will probably be in business with writers seeing films at the time, uh, you know, don't have any distribution yet. And then, like, last year and this year, actually, I didn't get any of the screenings that I wanted to going in. So, by the way, like, you're not the only one who's not getting the screenings. <laughs> like, I'm 15 years deep in the business in SVP, and I go to, like, log in. I'm like, okay, well, nothing's available for me. And I try calling all my contacts. They're like, yeah, no. <laughs> That's so, very comforting, by the way. Yeah. It really makes me feel better. Yeah, we don't get everything we want either. But you want to know what the pro thing is? I don't care because I've been there enough to know that right. every film is a good right. film. Every talk is a good talk. Like, I've ne right. in my 10-plus years of going, I have never been disappointed. And, like, a good example is last year I went to go see Colette. It was an easy screen to get into. I was a little frustrated. Went, saw it, my favorite film of the year. Kira Knightley was amazing in it, and I was so happy that I had seen it in that environment. Um, so anyway, with all that said, um, you know, I think with anything, 
as with a, with a publicist, whether it's Sundance or it's a film premiere, or it's one of our junkets or press opportunities, you know, I think you have to be aware that the industry is changing so rapidly right now that we're all trying to keep up and we're all trying to get ahead to f figure out what the new thing is. And you know, the media landscape is changing, mm -hmm. um, the social media landscape is changing, what influencers mean to us, what they meant to us a year ago is not what they mean to us today. Um, and we're, you know, we're looking at things uh, not necessarily about numbers, but about impact the engagement that you're getting on your post like it's one thing to post all the time but if you're getting two likes or you're getting a hundred likes and no one's commenting and I know that those hundred likes are bought versus someone who's getting 50 mm -hmm. likes and 30 people are commenting I'm gonna have the person who got the 50 likes show up because I know that their readers are engaging with their content and that's incredibly important and in a real way engaging um, and journalists who have a point of view. I mean, all of our films, no film's created equal. Uh, they're all different. Uh, uh, Crazy Rich Asians is not the same as an Aquaman, which is not the same as Sun is Also a Star, which we have coming up. So, you know, we really look to the journalists who make the most sense for the reach and the audience that we're trying to get, where we're trying to expand or we might be having issues. Um, and we also have many things that we have to serve. Not only do we have the theatrical release, we have a global landscape that we need to think of, so we're flying journalists in from around the world. We're banking content for home entertainment because once the film goes on DVD or electronic sell-through, that talent's not coming back for us. We have one shot to accomplish multiple things. We have to get digital content. Um, we have to get things for multicultural. You know, So many different things that sometimes when... Um, you hear that no, it's, it's easy to say like, well, I've been doing this and I'm this. And, and it's like, yeah, 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 I hear you. We also have to open the film in China. We also have to open the film in Germany. I also have a home entertainment thing. And so it's, it's coming up with ways that you are unique, like how Gil said, you know, looking at who your audience is and do you reach an LGBTQ audience? Do you reach an African-American audience? But also um, just really understanding where your value is to them and is your value going to every single film that's every single genre and participating, or is it going into asking for things that are specific to something that your readers would actually be interested in, that you are getting that engagement, and you do become an expert in that specific field, and us as studio publicists pay attention to that, and we're like, okay, I know what you're good for, I know that you're consistent, I know that your audience is engaged, that's a different story than just saying, I want this, I want this, I want this. And then I'm like, yeah, but you want everything. Like, who, who are you and who is your reader? <laughs> but, you know, so I, you know, I think there's a lot of things that contribute to the participation um, from the studio perspective. But at the end of the day, a lot of it, too, is relationship-driven. And relationships are a two-way street. Um, and it's not just with the studio publicist. We're part of the journey. It's also the personal publicist. Because at the end of the day, the personal publicists are connected to the talent, and they're the ones at the end of the day who can make anything happen. Right. I can tell you yes all day. If that personal publicist says no, the answer is no, and there's nothing I can do. Right. Period. So right. it's really making sure that you are cultivating your relationships with personal publicists and making sure that they're aware of what you're writing um, and being consistent with them, and that goes a long way to help us. And also, too, if I might add, so a festival like Sundance and like uh, Toronto, your best friend will also be the publicity office. Mm -hmm. So, and at Sundance, 100%. they have they have different the different sections have public their own publicists that work within. So, if you can't get a ticket from one of us, just knock on the door of them. And as long as you're nice to them, that they have they have at least three or four extra tickets for that premiere that they can have just for emergency sake. And a lot of times they'll have those. They could have those for you. So. Work together with the Sundance Press Office, with the you know any of the film festival press offices. They would definitely be keys for you to getting to where you need to be. Yeah, I think also too. I mean, this group and the video that this will live on forever for folks to see. It's all about shared resources. Yeah. I found that like I, I've said this to Eric and I think of a bunch of y'all. The the conversation outside the lobby after a film screens to me is. Mm the best 10 yes. minutes mm -hmm. in yes. filmmaking mm -hmm. or yeah. film criticism. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it is about relationships and conversations and who you know and being able to have mm -hmm. all of those. And then especially even on the publicity side, because there's the other side of it, which is when people don't deliver. I mean, every one of us has been probably late on a draft. Sorry, Joel. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> or missed something. So talk about that other side of it, about the people that follow through and how they maintain those relationships and unfortunately sometimes when people lose them. Yeah. Well, Tara has a great story. Yeah, I was like, Tara and <laughs> yeah. David. I'm I like, have some, you guys I have some have great stories. Story. So, I, you know, I've worked in 
publicity since you know 2004, 14, 15 years, but specifically with multicultural journalists, and it's not something that I do because, well, one, it is a business imperative and it's just good business, but also because I want to support my community and communities that I care about and I want to give them opportunities, and there are a lot of journalists who we've been able to help and they've built and they've had great careers and they're forever loyal to me and I'm loyal to them. Um, but there are journalists where I want to give them a shot and just recently, uh, you know, I sent one to a set visit in Australia for Aquaman, lost her transcripts. Okay, great. So I just sent you to Australia, you got access to Aquaman and now you cannot write a story. Great. So then, you know, I give her, you know, things happen, gave her another shot because I want to see her win. I have no reason to not want to see this outlet win. It's an African American outlet. I want you to win. So I offer her a spot on the Comic-Con line. Like, let me tell you how coveted <laughs> those lines are for Warner Brothers, Comic-Con, Hall H press line, DC. That's our coveted spaces. Yeah. We, I got one. I gave it to her. She doesn't show up. And I'm like, and I don't think she understood the amount of access that she was getting and how embarrassing that is for me because I am the one who's going back to filmmakers, to the, exec the publicity executive, global head, and saying, this is what happened. And it just gives people more of a reason to say that's why we don't invite certain journalists because they're not being professional and they're not taking the opportunity and running with it. Uh, and that's just a very extreme example. The same thing happens when we invite you guys to screenings and you show up 15 minutes late. Now you're disrupting the whole screening. Now we have a whole group of journalists that you, you're interrupting as they're trying to sit. Uh, you're not seeing the whole film. How do you know that in the first five minutes something incredible didn't happen? And it just gives people more fuel to that fire of like, this is why we only invite these people because they're showing up on time, they're doing this, they're doing that. Uh, you know, I'm give, getting people access and then you ask for the, the link to the story and it's two weeks after release and you're getting the link to the story. And I'm like, I'm not running a chase campaign here. Like, <laughs> I'm all about opening weekend. I need that opening weekend story and you've now been sitting on a story for a month. What's going on? Why would I give you over somebody else that kind of access? 